Hi, Robert. It's good to see you today. Hey, John. It's been um, a while. <laughs> yeah, it has been a little bit. Uh, it's got some things going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, usually you and I are together when we're getting ready to maybe launch some new yeah. product or maybe at a big trade show like an E3 or, or Computex. But I kind of miss them. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> um, I do too. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, I got a lot of energy just being here with you. Um, but we're here also for an occasion, which is five years of AMD Ryzen. Time flies. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. And a part of the math that makes up five years of AMD Ryzen, of course, is that that arc of you know first showing Zen, mm. showing Zen competitively, et cetera. And, and you and I both got to be uh, ringside, if you will, for that whole um, that whole experience. And you know, I just got to say, and you, you were part of many of these with me. I just reflect back on 2016. Yeah. And um, you know, I had this first. Very interesting experience. I was in Australia primarily to meet with retailers, but we, we did a, a, a press roundtable while I was there. <laughs> okay. And I thought we were going to talk about sort of a broad range of subjects, what was happening in the PC market. And all that was on almost anybody's mind in May 2016 is Zen. And yeah. how was it looking? You know, fast forward to uh, Computex, mm -hmm. and that was the first public demonstration of Zen. Yeah. And we basically just played a video that said, I am Zen. And one of my favorite memories of that. Um, we're working with two of AMD's you know, top engineers who were doing some sort of the bring up on Zen. I was at that time using probably something like an FX8350 in my system at home. And you know, I played with the demo for a little bit. And I was like, wow, this is much faster. <laughs> and I just had this buzz you yeah. know, all throughout Computex getting ready for that. And of course, you know, Lisa does the demo, Lisa Sue does the demo uh, on stage. It was just such a proud moment. Mm. Then we go to the first competitive demo in August. That's right. Um, it was around the hot chips and some disclosures we were making around Zen. And my, you know, I just got lucky and got to do that demo on stage with uh, Lisa. And then you come to why we're here today. So we're, we're in Austin yeah. together. Um, we're at the same venue. It's called Fair Market, where we filmed New Horizon, which was That's the right. debut of the name Ryzen yeah. and really a tour de force. And you were a big featured part of that. Talk a, a little bit about yeah, a your memories. Demo button presser. Well, yeah, I thought you were more than a demo button no, no, presser. No, no, it was fun. Yeah, what, tell, tell me a little bit about what you remember about you know when we mm -hmm. debuted Ryzen here in December 2016. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, it was the first time we had shown, I believe, gaming performance. This was the first time. Correct. And yeah. it was a, a battlefield of some kind. And then we had a couple performance demos for content creation. Like we were the first eight-core CPU, and at the time, everybody was like. What do you do with that many cores? Like, why do you have so many? It's like, well, content creation, man. Like, this is going to be a big leap forward. But it was so cool because that was my moment where I was like, this is real. So, you know, we've tried since then. We've actually made it a principle that we would consistently, pleasantly surprise with each generation of, of Ryzen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we sit here today in the fall of 2021. Um, how do we keep that going? What, what are the sort of the core building blocks to keep that going? Well, core building blocks are, I think, the fundamentals that our enthusiasts always very, very much care about. It's core architecture, it's process technology, it's frequency, and it's, it's the platform. Those are sort of the four fundamentals that you got to get right uh, to win, to be successful. You know, also, you know, talk in the industry today about the idea of using different CPU cores in the same sure. design. Can you, you know, talk us through um, AMD's view on that, what that might mean for the AMD Ryzen mm -hmm. roadmap? That would be, you know, really helpful. Yeah, I think the, the meta there is like every silicon company is, is thinking about what that next generation power efficiency looks like. Uh, mixed cores is one approach. The Android ecosystem took that a long time ago. Um, but the, the way we plan to do it is, is going back to our roots, this Zen philosophy, which is we built a core that's physically much smaller than what other companies were building in x86 land. And when you pack that together with process leadership, packaging leadership like chiplets or 3D vCache, when you pack that in with new firmware work we're doing, we can drive to much, much lower power profiles than we're even at today. We are the power efficiency leader today. We can keep doing that. And going to the other end of power efficiency, that's performance, right? And we, we know that having uh, a number of high performance, very capable Zen cores 
is the answer to deliver performance leadership too. So maybe as a short version, we're looking at the dynamic range of what those cores can do from low power to high performance, and we know we have the recipe for success there. Zen as a philosophy, as an engineering habit, uh, will allow us you know, next year, 2023, 2024, to continue delivering on what people care about. They want higher frequencies, more IPC, lower power, performance per watt, gaming performance, and Zen does that. And we don't have to necessarily explore chip configurations that may be harder to address in software. So Zen as a philosophy guides us then, guides us now, and it's frankly how we stay ahead. It's how we win. So Zen represents that perfect balance yeah. of performance, power, features, and that's what we'll continue to see that's right. in the future. All right, so let's stay maybe in that, um, that features and, and spec area for a minute. There's quite a bit of talk about new technologies for the platform mm -hmm. that can surround a processor like Ryzen right now as we sit here. Can you tell us anything about what to expect in next generation platform technology sure. for Ryzen and maybe when? We're at the end of socket AM4's life. I, I don't think that's you know, a huge, huge secret. Uh, but it served us incredibly well, four years, five years almost. Uh, and it started with a pre-Zen product, actually. It was like four cores, four threads, low-speed DDR4, PCI Gen 3, yeah. only eight lanes. And now we're out, we are where we are. Everything has gone up by a factor of like 4x. But all platforms must move on. So in 2022, Ryzen will have a new platform. And some key ingredients are DDR5, PCI Express Gen 5, and cooler compatibility with existing socket AM4 coolers. This industry moves in cycles, IP cycles, core cycles, and they're all lining up for a next-gen platform. So I've seen the rumors, you have too, yeah. saying that next-gen platform will only have Gen 4. No, 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 it'll have Gen 5 because Ryzen has made a name for itself. The new, new platform coming 2022. That's right. Um, newest, you know, high-speed memory standards. That's right. Newest IO standards, mm -hmm. um, but bringing forward the, that big cooler ecosystem that's right. into it. Okay, that's fantastic. End of the day, people want to know, is AMD building a, a, a platform with all the latest and greatest technology to plug into? Yeah, yes. Now, um, I do want to follow up on one thing you said. So AM4, mm -hmm. which of course, you know, as you mentioned, even precedes Zen, with how it was brought, or precedes Ryzen, and how, how it was brought to market. Um, there are still new technologies and products to come though for, for AM4. Absolutely. So for example, at Computex 2021, we showed 3D chiplet technology. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how we'll see 3D chiplet technology come to rise and when its relationship to AM4? Yeah, so 3D vCache is kind of like an average 15% performance bump for games, kind of by design, games love memory. So there will be a Ryzen product in early 2022 that goes into socket AM4 with 3D vCache. I think there was a lot of speculation about that, but yeah, that's, that's what's happening. And then, um, you know, further out in time, you've got that Zen 4 product also later in 2022, new platform, new technologies. It's like a nice, nice steady drum beat of new stuff. Um, so let me just underscore that for a second. We, for all those AM4 customers, you know, tens of millions of them worldwide. That's right. Um, the, 3D chiplet technology, specifically vCache, is coming to rise. That's right. I'm assuming on the, on the Zen 3 based products that we have today, but that's like a generational uplift yeah. in gaming performance. Like Zen 2 to Zen 3 was like a 19% IPC uplift, and there was a, a larger than that contribution from games, all things being equal. 3D vCache is like that. It's a 15% on average gaming improvement without touching frequency or architecture or any of it. Like just the existence of this thing is a generational leap in performance. Okay, so we've, we've been talking about this theme of the things that you can put um, around the core and, mm. and, and how the core is packaged would be a good example of yeah. uh, 3D chiplet. Features in the platform would be an example of you know, where we go next with the platform. What about other fixed function hardware choices that we might make, sort of that, that Zen philosophy balance of what else we want to add to bring better experiences? Mm -hmm. To the community. So frequency, architecture, process, packaging is another lever. But yeah, this this idea of accelerators or non-CPU core performance enhancements is a key ingredient of our roadmap going on in time. And it could be functions that uh, do noise cancellation for teleconferencing or 
uh, use machine learning algorithms to correct the direction of someone's eyeballs when they, you know, maybe they're not looking quite at the camera right. in a teleconference. The eye line, the, the eye contact. The eye contact yes. gaze, yeah. uh, things like human presence detection. Maybe you get up from your laptop and it automatically locks itself because it knows that you, the user, are there. And there's lots of security things you can do with that or even quality of life convenience enhancers. Uh, and then further out in time, uh, these computer vision and machine learning accelerators can, uh, can be specifically used to enhance performance as well. Uh, you know, there are just some, some tasks that are AI driven or machine learning driven that just run much better when you have a, a specific accelerator for it. So these, you know, that's, that's a, a several years worth of roadmap development in parallel to cores and process. Okay, so you've given us um, the ingredients, if you will, mm -hmm. of where the AMD Ryzen roadmap goes from here. Let me put you even more on right. the spot. Can you, you know, talk to us about some of the specific uh, products that we can expect sure. to come? Well, I look at, uh, for example, our, our notebook CPUs coming in early 2022. Uh, I think there's this big question out there as this whole industry grapples with power consumption, for example. How do we get longer battery life? How do we get more efficient? How do we run cooler? There's a couple things in the pipeline from us that really help there. Uh, one, we don't really have a name for it, uh, but it's, it's called Power Management Framework. And it's this idea that unlike CPUs today, which use a power management algorithm that is one size fits all, doesn't matter if you're running a, a, a document or a game, it's the same algorithm all the time. What if instead you had multiple different power management algorithms in the firmware? And depending on what the user is doing, you can shift between them. Uh, that allows you to extract even more power efficiency from the CPU, which is so important in notebook for battery life. Um, so that's a key one. We're also working on new power states. Uh, so you can turn off more of the CPU cores, the GPU cores, the things around those cores, and that too is another extension of battery life. And it takes lots of engineering work to make these aspects of the chip discrete enough that you can turn them off uh, without affecting performance or anything like that. So those are just two examples. So you know, as people challenge AMD, to drive performance forward and power efficiency forward and how do we drive low power, highly efficient experiences? It, we can do it with firmware, we can do it with our packaging, we can do it with our core design, uh, we can do it with close collaboration on platform. We have tons of levers we can pull. All right, so Robert, um, I gotta thank you. You've shared a lot with us today. I hope um, the, you know, the community um, is, is benefiting from that and getting a clear sense of what's next for Rise and you've also you know, drop some breadcrumbs that, you know, maybe we can look ahead to mm -hmm. um, uh, early 2022, not very far. Not very to, far. To get a lot more detail about these innovations that, that cover, you know, the, the, the desktop PC, that cover mm -hmm. the, the, the laptop um, and more. So, you know, it's been just fantastic to spend this time with you today. It's been fun to reminisce. Sure has. Together, yeah, it has. Um, time flies, and man. I hope you and I are gonna get to be together, you know, telling that story in the next chapters. I think we will. Yeah. There's a lot of chapters coming. There are. There are. <laughs> Thank great. you, Robert. Thanks, John.